Way to go, Tic Tac! Thank you. Well, you wouldn't have heard of me. Dance off, bro. He's a friend from work. I can do this all day. Yeah, I'll show you to us. And they just don't like build her up good at all, you know? Sassy brat, full of himself. This is a long time coming. Loki was a fun show to watch week by week. Um, just because I felt like every new episode was something completely new. The tone the tone was changing each episode. It wasn't something like, say, WandaVision or Falcon and Winter Soldier where you kind of kept a straight... It felt like one story continued. With Loki, it really did feel like each episode they solved the answers... That they, they saw, they found the answers to the questions they were asking, but then while finding it, then, then something else would happen. They got new answers, and it, it was it was super cool to watch, right? I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. But just like my Falcon and Winter Soldier review, what I'm going to be doing is going through uh, what I thought of each of the main characters, um, and while doing that, I'll be talking about events in the show and the relationships between the characters that I like, stuff that I like between them. Um, and then at the end, I'll kind of give a brief, since, like I said, each episode was just a new thing, I'll kind of give a brief overview of each episode, um, and then I'll give my opinion on the whole series, that'll be kind of a, a season, that'll be kind of a rant, and at the very, very end, what I do on my second channel is I have, each time I watch the new episode, week by week, I would, I uploaded my first impressions on my second channel, and that's, I'm going to be putting all six of those just at the end of this video, so, this video seems kind of long, it's probably because of that part, but... Hey, stick around, and I'm going to be just kind of blabbling about the characters, what I liked, what I didn't like, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. Wow. First, let's get on to Loki and what I thought of him. Don't let the flame die out! This is actually the last thing I was recording. I was re-watching my uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier review, and something I talked about in the beginning was the anticipation for the show, and I, I kind of want to talk about that here. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, at the time, was the thing I was most hyped for. And when I first saw Loki, I'm trying to remember this because this was like two years ago now. When they first revealed Loki, I thought, oh, great. You know, uh, it's cool that they're going into, but I really thought they were just marketing. You know, oh, Loki's gone. Give him a show. When they were giving Loki a show, it felt like the um, you get a show and you get a show and you get a show kind of attitude of it, which they really, really feel like they're doing now. Um, but... Uh, that's a topic for a later day, but I wasn't super hyped for it. I was interested because, of course, I was going to watch it. But I was like, whatever, you know, a Loki show can be interesting. Then we got the, like, news that I was going to have, like, the time keepers, the time variance authority and all that. I was gonna, like, oh, shit, this is important. This is going to be interesting. So then I got a lot more hyped for it. And not as big of a story as the Falcon and Soldier one, but I did want to talk about, like, how I wasn't really interested. And then they started giving us like news about it. I was like ah I want to watch that <laughs> you know so yeah let's get into like the actual character stuff I may have already done that I'll be back in time. this mic kind of matches my shirt the boom part anyways so Loki what first thing I want to dive into is that I, when first going into the show and what I think a lot of people were worried about something I was definitely worried about was I feel like a lot of people were worried that they were just kind of retcon this Loki because this Loki is from 2012 right after Avengers and in case you don't know Avengers Loki so much different from post Avengers Loki I think you can call it I don't think people realize how much character development w was in Thor Ragnarok for Loki because if you watch Ra um, not Thor Ragnarok Thor the Dark World because when you watch Ragnarok he's still kind of you know yeah, mischievous and stuff. Of course he is, because it's Loki. He never really fully changes until, you know, the end, Avengers Infinity War. And I was really worried that we were going to get into this show. And it was just going to be like, oh, he's, he's, he's the Loki that we have. He's our Loki. Um, just kind of like a little retcon like that. But they didn't do that. Um, when they were first doing the memory bit, I was like, oh, no, they're, gonna, they're just going to have him remember everything. But the fact that they kind of changed him. This Loki has ex not experienced all the same stuff as our Loki, but seen it all. So he has positive character development, but in a different kind of way. 
which I love. That is so smart how they did it. And I don't I don't know how to describe like what I like about it. I just know that it was really smart how they did it. So it's still it's a new Loki, but it still has similar vibes, I guess, to the one we are used to. Uh, on that note, uh, let's continue on. His relationship with Mobius. When I first watched the show, and towards the end, they're like, oh, we're, we're, we're friends, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, no, the, you kind of just bickered the whole time. That's why it's good to watch a show like a second time, a few, I'd say even months after you've seen it the first time. To really grasp it, because um, when you're watching that weekly, week by week basis, you tend to forget it. Episodes sit, but you also forget more stuff. Their relationship did feel like a real relationship. They start off, you know, he's they're bickering. They kind of start to get along. Then Mobius is like, ah, shoot, you know, Loki's right about this, and you, they never really end off fully trusting each other. They admit to each other being friends, but they never, you never really see them fully come to trust each other, which I think is supernatural. You know, I'm not saying they can't trust each other, so that means it's real. You know, I just feel like it's a very natural progression of a friendship. The other relation, the other only really real relationship he had in the show was with Sylvie. I'll get more into that when I get to the Sylvie bit, but that was really kind of. When you first watch it, you're like, okay, this is weird. He's literally falling for himself. But then when you watch it a second time, you realize, oh, that's the point. When they first talk, ew, no, I don't. Oh. I don't like her. What? Her? Gross. You think, oh, they're doing like, it's like an elementary school bit. Like, ew, cooties, gross. But really, it's him coming to terms with that he's falling in love with himself. He knows that's narcissistic. He knows that's so dumb. But he is falling for it. And it's cool to see him progress through the show. Their love is what pushed the show forwards. Speaking of that. Quick side tangent, I recently binge-watched all the regular show, recently. That'll be a video later. Um, but something I loved, especially about the finale, is that the main characters that we watch aren't the main characters of the story happening. Not, a, not the whole time, just towards the end. The ones that we thought were the main characters are now no longer the main characters. I loved that. I loved that. That's what happens in Loki. Um... The episodes, like I said, each episode is like a new thing. So after like the second episode, once Sylvie is fully like revealed, boom. That, it's no longer Loki's show. It's Sylvie's show. It's Sylvie's mission. It's Sylvie as the main character of that story. But we are still watching Loki like he's the main character. But he isn't. They even, uh, Kang even calls him out on it at the finale. He's like, you're just a fly on a dragon. And you're along for the ride, but hey, you held on. I love that in storytelling. That's a personal thing, but I loved how they did that. I loved how he really was just along for the ride. He was just kind of there. It wasn't like a thing where we're looking at the story through his eyes. No, no. It was a thing of he's just in the story. He's not the main character. He's not the one who can defeat the bad guy. He's not the one who makes the ultimate sacrifice. He's just there, and I love and I love that. That's a personal thing, but I really do admire that. Now, that was that was something fun I really liked. I really like this version of Loki. I'm happy we're getting season two. Um, if season two holds up, I hope that we keep seeing him. But at the same time, we've seen, counting this show, I think we've seen Loki die. Uh, it's one, two, three, four times now. Yeah. It's safe to say every time we see Loki show up, he's going to die. So, I don't know. I like this version of Loki. I hope they keep him. Uh, I hope they keep doing interesting stuff with him. Keep making him grow. He grew throughout the season. I hope they keep growing him, you know. Bleh. Let's go on to you know, Lightning McQueen. Just drank the rest of my protein shake, and now my lips are all sticky. Anyways, first thing I want to talk about Owen Wilson, or uh, Mobius. And I know this is just a him thing, but he's also an actor, so I'm going to blame him for it. It's, it's the constant whispering. It's, I know it's how he acts, but he's just always whispering. I don't understand. It's, it's almost to the point where I feel like he's trying to do a Heath Ledger impression, it, like Joker. It, it's something that didn't ruin the show, but I noticed so much, I knew I had to talk about it. Mobius is a character that I'm happy they went in the direction with. He starts off just trying to stop a Loki, and then he he also character development development evolves. He learns, oh, everything I've been told is a lie. And instead of acting like Renslayer and trying to just deny it all, he straight up he doesn't just straight up betray, but he 
he has doubt in himself and of course in the Lokis of like, is this actually, you know, I believe this all my life. There's no way it's not going to go this way. Uh, the way he goes back to the TVA and takes it all down, super interesting. There's not a whole lot I can say about him because he really wasn't in the show as much as I remember the first time. Um, he's just kind of in like the first two episodes and then the finale he's in a bit. This all, I mean, of course, there's other instances of him being there. Um, the end kind of really switched him up. So we may not be seeing, and with how they're doing it, we may not ever see this Mobius again. We're obviously going to see Mobius somehow again, but it may not be our Mobius. You know, our Mobius. Like I said, the relationship between him and Loki really, was really interesting. I liked how he never really trusted Loki in the beginning, and then when he did decide to trust him, it was for one instance, and even then he was, like, super hesitant about it. He's a really well-written character, believable. Um, the scenes of him, like, how he's, like, explaining how the TVA works to Loki, and they're on the investigation side of it. It's super fun. How he wanted to be friends with Loki, but, like, he keeps just messing with him. I feel like sometimes... He would act like Loki betrayed him when he didn't really betray him. I don't know. It was weird. He's a good character, and I want to see more of him. I'm not talking a lot about him because I kind of already talked about him in the Loki segment. But Owen Wilson did a great job. Like, actually great. I, I, you know, I kind of joked about how he talked before. You know, the how he would whisper. But, you know, it, it, it's something that would was fine. It was fine. It's really not a deal breaker. Um, the relationship he had with Renslayer was also a believable one. How... It, that's really all I can say about it. He, I like how there wasn't a lot of main characters in the show. That's something I'll talk about the, at the end, but I'll figure I bring up here. Mobius, good character, good. I like, but I also like that they didn't completely focus on the him and Loki aspect. I feel like when it got old, they immediately moved on to Loki and Sylvie. This show is just really good with how they set up the show and the writing. Once again, stuff I'll talk about later. Speaking of Sylvie, that's the power of love. Sylvie was a character I really liked, but I feel like I don't have a lot to say about her. Like I said in the Loki segment, I really thought that this character was going to be maybe the ultimate big bad. I think we all thought this was going to be the main villain of the series. But I'm really happy they went the direction that we didn't expect and made the show about her. The way they evolved her, I keep saying evolved, like character development, duh. But the way that they stuck her and Loki on that planet together... And had them coming up with plans. Um, like, th there, it's hard to describe, but the way they kind of passed the torch from Loki being the main character in episodes one and two to her was really smart. The way that how she shows love for Loki is different than how he's showing it to her, super smart. Like, how she never really does, they never do any of her plans, you notice? Or his plans, you notice? They do once. And then at the end, she fixes it. You know, it's clear that she's smarter. She's more uh, stronger than this Loki. And it, they don't, like, bounce around that. They don't, you know, nerf her to make her not strong. This is her show. This is really her show. And I like it. She's the one with the ambition. She's the one with the plan. She's the one with the goal. And then we get to that goal, and then it's like, well, what now? I say that this is her show, and then I liked her. But I feel like to give a full good opinion on her, I need to see her... When she doesn't have something dead set on her mind. Does that make sense? Like, this show is really good for her. But, like, let's see her now that she's done with her plan. If we even do ever see her again. I'm sure we will. She was pretty popular um, amongst the fans and with the show. Obviously, being her show. Like I said, I really liked her as a character. But I feel like I don't have a lot to say. The actress was really good. Um, I really thought this was going to be, like, a Mary Sue character that I wasn't going to like, or that she was going to be, like, way too full of herself. And she is full of herself, but in, like, a weird way, so it's still enjoyable to watch. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm saying that a lot. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I don't know, like I said, she's a good character. I enjoyed watching her, and I want to see more from her. That's how you know you have a good character, when you enjoyed it, and you want to see more. If you just enjoy a character, but you don't care to see more, that's a fine character. This was a good character. But like I said, I just don't have a lot to say about her, and everything I do, I kind of already said, so... Yeah. I figured this would be a fun segment to make on its own. So, the Lokis, uh, we meet a couple of them throughout the thing. I think they call him Old Loki or Future Loki. Um, he was fun. I like that he had, like, a bigger role than just kind of a quick cameo. Uh, the costume was obviously fun. His big, you know, big building of Asgard thing to really show off Loki's power... And how then, you know, the main Loki acknowledges, like, man, I think we're stronger than we think we are. I feel like that's set up for something. 
I'm not saying Loki's gonna like our Loki or our new Loki is gonna do that. I've said Loki so many times in this video. I'm gonna say it so many more times. The only thing that's he's gonna do that exact thing. I just it was fun. It was a fun scene. It was a cool scene um, to go through. Kid Loki. Uh, people are saying he's gonna be in because there's obviously setting up some credits. Kids Avengers. He was fine. Boastful Loki traded them betrayed them or whatever president loki i wanted to see more president loki i thought this was going to be like a whole episode onto itself the fact that it was more or less just a cameo was kind of annoying and then they really hyped him up we even got a character poster for him what was that about that was weird uh and then alligator loki funny concept uh i think this is the last we're going to be seeing loki's and i really just wanted to take this segment to talk about old loki um the fact that he is what our version of Loki is. Like, our original, the one that's dead from Thanos, is if he didn't die. It's funny. It's funny how they took that that what-if kind of concept, what if Loki didn't die in Infinity War, and how he also is the same way our Loki was, where it's like he had character development, but in a different way. Super interesting. Super interesting concept. Yeah, I just figured it'd be funny to have an own se their own segment, all the Lokis. And it was funny, so... There we are. We're going to move on now. I always feel like somebody's watching me. So they never call him Kang in the show, although that actor is going to be playing Kang, and he's playing a version of Kang. Um, I know he's who sees all or whatever. Um, man at the end time, whatever. I'm going to call him Kang for simplicity. We're never seeing this character again, this goofy, eccentric character. I think it makes sense for the situation he's in. He's seen all... He's seen everything that has happened, is happening, and will happen. So he's gone not crazy, like not gone mad, but he's gone crazy. He's just like, there's, there's no point to anything. What, What's even the deal? Oh, you disappointed? I like that he's breaking the fourth wall without breaking the fourth wall. You know, oh, I hope you're not disappointed. They call me a conqueror. You know, I really like this act. I can't remember the actor's name at the moment. But I really like this portrayal of him. I remember when I first watched the finale, I was on a car, I was on a car trip home from out of town so i watched the finale late and i was in a car and with my earbuds in i remember thinking this character is so much fun but at the same time i'm so happy he's only in this one episode and that we're never going to see this character again because it's getting kind of annoying i, I just watching it a second time i kind of take that back i kind of like this eccentric he knows all but he's not greater than everybody else and no matter what he gets his way if they kill him he gets his way if he lives then he lives, so he's still kind of, you know, he wins no matter what, and it's super interesting. I know we probably, I know in Ant-Man and future stuff for Kang, we probably are going to get the, I am greater than all, I know all, I'm better than you. But this this character, this portrayal of um, uh, the one who remains, the guy at the end of time, he who remains, it, it's fun. It was really fun. He really, like I said, I, when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this is way too goofy. This is goofy just for the sake of being goofy. But then when you watch it a second time, it's like, this is really fun. I really like this. I really hope that maybe we can keep Kang. Like, maybe if they do a huge crossover and he's the big bad, after that we get this Kang back. Maybe not as a hero, but just a recurring guy. Kind of like, I first thought it was Happy Hogan in the Spider-Man films. It'd be really fun to see this character. I want, like, I'm, and of course I'm interested because I'm a Marvel fan. I'm always interested in what's next. But with this, this character, this portrayal of the character, He Who Remains, it's really fun. It was really fun. Um, but there is also another part of me who's like, this could get annoying after a while. It's good that they he went all out for this one episode. You know, he really stole the show. Um, wouldn't be the first time that's happened in the show. But, you know, good character. I liked it. I would like to see more, but I'm happy they're not doing more. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Who are you people? There weren't a whole lot of other characters in the show, which is something I'm really happy about. Um, stuff like WandaVision didn't have a bunch of characters. It mainly just had the f three, and then they... Three, two, the show didn't have a lot of characters. And that's something that um, you hear people in Marvel kind of talk a lot. Maybe with the Avengers stuff is, oh, there's just so many characters. But even in any show, any movie, it's hard to balance a lot of characters because then you feel like you have the need to give them more give each character something important to do or they feel useless why have that character there if they're not doing anything but then if you don't balance it well then you get an interesting story but then it gets cut off too soon so it's like why have them if you're not going to conclude their story this one with the side characters they gave them the right amount of stuff to do um thank b48 or whatever her name is i think i think her name is gugu 
It's G U G U, and I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Gugu. Um, the the guard lady, they gave her just the right amount to do. They gave her the segment where Sylvie enchants her. She gets curious about it. She goes through with it. Boom, her story's done, and that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, I feel like I have to talk about Miss Minutes. Um, Tara Strong did a good job playing her. She never got annoying. She never felt like she was there just to be a mascot character, um, to sell merchandise. She never felt like that. Like that that's a plus, I guess. Um, and there wasn't a lot of the, the timekeepers were an interesting. Like I said, they just didn't really do a lot. They served their purpose of being the big mystery until boom, epic reveal. They're fake. Then they're done. They're done, and that's good. That's good. Renslayer. I didn't give her her own segment because I don't have a lot to say about her. I feel like they're going to do more with her later. She has some kind of connection with Kang, so that's going to be interesting to see play out. I mean, the comic she does. So that's going to see be interesting to see play out. Obviously, something's going on. The fact that she also kind of had the same goals as us and Sylvie, that she wants to know what's going on, but she still wants some kind of position of power. It's 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 an interesting concept. Our relationship with Mobius was basic at best. You didn't really see a lot of it. They're like, we're best friends. We're best friends all the time. And he betrayed me. It's like it doesn't... I only saw y'all talk like twice. It doesn't really work. She... I'm happy they didn't make her the villain. Like, it seemed like they are going to. But, you know. You know. You know. That's why I didn't put her, because she didn't have a lot to do. Hopefully they give her more. Her her acting was fine. The lady who played her was fine. But it's just like, the character was basic. Not a good or bad, so I can't really say I liked her or I didn't like her. She was just kind of there. I'm happy that she was just kind of there, though. Because if they try to make her a villain, like, to distract us, it wouldn't have worked. What they did with her was perfect. Good. Good. I if I'm forgetting a character, then they were important they weren't important enough for me to remember. Sorry. I have two mics set up. I probably shouldn't do that. There we go. So I'm gonna say right here, Loki is so far the best of all of the all of the Disney Plus series. Here it is on the lit. Let me here it is on the list. I don't know exactly where I'm putting it yet, but you can see it right there. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's for good reason. It's It doesn't feel like your typical Marvel stuff. I can say WandaVision was unique, but it still felt kind of typical. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was basic Marvel stuff. And there's nothing wrong with basic Marvel stuff. I like basic Marvel stuff. But it it's always good to acknowledge when something isn't. Loki doesn't really feel like that. Like I said, with every new, every episode felt like something new. Felt like you were constantly progressing. This is what you need in television. I feel like a lot of shows now, even stuff like WandaVision, it leads you, it leads you on. I'm not just talking about like Mephisto or whatever. I'm just saying it sets up a question in episode one and then kind of answers it at the end. That or answers the question, but then sets up an even bigger question that you know you're not going to know. Loki doesn't do that. Loki, the show, each episode answers the qu- – I feel like it answers the questions it sets out in the beginning of the episode. And, of course, you can go through them and prove me wrong. Oh, actually, this was an answer to blah, blah, blah. Um, the biggest thing I can think of right now is a Sylvie reveal. And then, of course, at the end, the who's behind it all. Except that wasn't even a mystery. They kind of – of course, they tease it because of course they are. But the whole time we knew the timekeepers were at the end. And then they got there, and then boom, huge reveal – Kills them. Cuts their head off. And then, boom. Right after that, another big reveal. Loki's dead. Oh, my God. End credit scene. Boom. Loki's not dead. There's more Lokis. And then, guess what? Very next episode answers all those questions. It kind of. The timekeeper thing was, of course, saved for the finale. But you know what I mean. It doesn't... It, watching it week to week was fun because you got little answers to everything you were questioning. And then binge watching all at once, you got to see all that happen. It was way more fun watching it week to week, more than the other shows. Um, best of the shows by far. Um, there were less characters for me to talk about, but I feel like I have less to say here at the end segment than I do with the Falcon and Winter Soldier review. Falcon and Winter Soldier, to be completely honest, was kind of forgettable um, in the grand scheme of all Marvel. Just like from a storytelling point, it's really good, but. From the whole stand, you know, what comes next. I know a lot of people complain about that, but it does help to leave an impact in the industry you're in. That's a whole video that's a whole video topic by itself. But in the Marvel industry you're in, you want to leave an impact. And Loki did that in a huge way. Loki, I'm so happy, is one of the only shows getting a season two. Um, 
and you don't know what to expect from season two. They were saying this, but the showrunners were saying this at the be before the season started. Like, hey, each episode is something new. And I was like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. We've heard it before. But it was. And so literally I have no idea what to expect from season two. We don't know when season two is coming out. We don't know if it's going to be maybe after Thor, if it's going to have Thor in it. Uh, stuff for season two I would like to see. Would like to see. I think I'd like to see... I think I want to see Thor and Loki, like this new Loki team up, like the Thor we have now and the new Loki, because now they're completely different characters from when they last teamed up in Thor Ragnarok. Um, I feel like we already gotten enough of old versions of them, so it wouldn't be like bad to get n these new versions teaming up. Like I said, I don't have a lot to say. It's a really good show. Um, I don't like giving stuff scores, you know, like 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, whatever, but I would probably give this show a solid like 8.5 out of 10 if I were to give it a score, but I'm not... But I'm not, even though I just did. Uh, that's why I rank them. It's on this side. That's why I rank them. <laughs> because I don't like giving stuff scores. It's a really good show. Uh, it's one of those things where I feel like if you don't watch all the other Marvel stuff, you may not enjoy. Something like WandaVision is something you can easily enjoy. But I don't know if this is something... I feel like it is, but you at the same time it isn't. It's really good. It's a really good project. It's And I'm really looking forward to season two. All right, so I didn't stay up till three to watch this one. Uh, first episode of Loki, it's obvious uh, a lot of setup going on. Like, we have to really explain what the TVA is, what's going on. It's, I, I hope they don't completely rely on the TVA. And when they do, do something later on in the future because they, they show off that it's like, whoa, even an Infinity Stone is useless here. So like for a power to be greater than that, they're not like laughing in the face of Thanos, you know, that stuff is still, you know, worthy. I don't. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, no, to the TVA, Thanos is nothing. Not like they're ever gonna fight or anything, but like Kang the Conqueror. When they do that, they're gonna have to show that the TVA is you know even powerless against that. You know, it's just something that you then have to keep introducing new greater powers because of this. It's fine though. Um, how they explain the timeline that there's just one timeline. There can be like offshoots of that but then those offshoots are the wrong stuff i always saw it as there's multiple universes each universe gets a timeline and like that's so like when you time travel you hop lines that's always how i saw it now they're explaining it that that isn't how it works so if that's the case then you're going by the rules of oh the time travel was always supposed to happen boom grandfather paradox so the MCU just cannot seem to get a handle on what their time travel is, right? They just can't figure it out. It should have, like, because when you do the whole it was supposed to happen thing, uh, one timeline, you can't do that because in the grandfather paradox, but if you have the where you jump between lines, so then you mess up that line, but then go back to your original line and everything's fine, it makes sense. I don't know. That's just one thing I noticed that it's kind of, it's one of those things, you just, it's time travel, so you just go along with it. Um, but no, everybody's doing a phenomenal job. They got the mystery set up. Who's the person? I think it's going to be the... Uh, they've already said, hey, yeah, this is another Loki. I think it's going to be the whole Lady Loki thing. Um, interesting, interesting. Uh, we got the D.B. Cooper stuff way sooner than I thought we would. That was really cool. That was really cool. Uh, seeing like Loki's reaction to the future and stuff, it was neat. Um, I'm ready to get out of the office space, though. It's just, it's not, not a boring setting at all. I'm just, like, ready to see more from the show, because the show, from this first episode, shows that it's able to, you know, be good. I don't know. I can't blame it being 4 a.m. on why I'm like this. Okay, uh, yeah, that's the show. It's really good. Um, would I say, I like comparing it to premieres, like, first episode... Um, I think this had a, this Loki so far had the best premiere. Yeah. Cause like, WandaVision had the two episodes, which are just regular sitcom stuff. Falcon and Winter Soldier had a really boring first episode. And this one is super interesting. So yeah, take that as you will. I'm back. It's three in the morning. So this episode was weird. And the biggest problem I had with it was, I don't know if there was a new, it felt like there's a new writer. I, I wasn't really paying attention in the credits, like, last time and then this time. But it just felt so different from the previous episode. The biggest problem I had with it was it kind of felt like 
scripted improv like you know how sometimes they let the actors kind of just you know go off each other like oh that's we want a little bit like a comedic bit here so let's have the actors just kind of talk to each other and be funny but instead of doing that it felt like it felt like they were writing down the improv bits does that make sense like they were that's the best way i can describe it it's scripted improv and when you do that it's so weird because stuff like that only works when it's natural and even when it's natural it doesn't always work but, like, in this instance, it just felt so weird. But, anyway, enough of that. Um, the episode was kind of boring. Uh, of course, the end, once it started ramping up, seeing them. I don't know. Like I said, it's like there's a new writer on board. So, Loki even felt so weird in this episode. He didn't feel like Loki. And I really don't like saying that because I really liked the first episode. So, then, for this to go and do that, it's like, eh, I don't want this to be bad. He didn't feel like Loki, and I get that this isn't, you know, the Loki we know. It's a new whatever, but still, it just felt so weird, so wrong. And I don't know how Mobius and Loki, like, I don't want to say their relationship, but, like, the way they go off each other, it's so weird. It's like, one minute he hates him, one minute he trusts him, one minute he doesn't. It's real inconsistent, I guess. I don't know. But other than that, the episode was fine. I had a major cliffhanger i'm happy they're revealing stuff early um i don't know if that's supposed to be a lady loki i thought enchantress in my mind i was like oh, enchantress maybe i don't know i'm sure they'll talk about it next episode but uh yeah see you then i guess i don't know loki episode three so this one was like super boring actually it felt like like a filler episode is the best way i can describe it um, the new character, Sylvie, the Lady Loki girl, she's not a boring character, she just seems very bland. Like, that, I don't know, it's just, maybe because we haven't learned, like, anything really about her at all. Like, we don't know her motivation, we don't know her plan, we don't know where she's from, we just know her, that's it. So maybe that's why it doesn't work well for me, I don't know, she's very bland. She's not a character that I'm actively, like, hating or running off the show. She can improve, and I hope that she does. Um, and just Loki seemed off in this episode. I don't know. We went from a really good premiere, a fantastic second episode, to just garbage filler episode, which really, like, they didn't even get the one thing done of getting off the planet or whatever. But according to Tom Hiddleston... The, the we're halfway through so like the rest of the series is going to be like totally crazy or totally changing totally new whatever um the stuff about love was super weird it's like dude isn't that like isn't that you it's just you from like another universe what what don't why are you talking i always saw loki as like asexual i guess that's just me though i i'm not saying he can't be in love i'm just saying that's you bro that's literally you it's kind of weird i don't know this episode was just super boring. Like I said, we we come off the heels of a fantastic second episode to this. It just felt like filler, I guess. I don't know. Uh, hopefully they improve the Sylvia character. Um, I don't know. This was just a boring episode. Okay, this is a big one. So Loki episode four just blew the whole thing wide open. So Tom Hiddleston has been hyping up episodes four and five. Not six, though, which is kind of weird. But he's been hyping these things up. He's like, it's going to change everything. And what the fuck? What the f What? Oh, my God. So basically all that happened in this episode was Loki and um, Sylvie coming back and saying, hey, guys, everything's messed up. And basically just ruining, ruining it. Um, this is all about first impressions. It, I got choked up when they killed off Morbius. Like, I, I like I wasn't, like, crying or anything, but I was like, oh, oh, my God. You know that feeling you get? Like, the choked up feeling? I was like, because it was sad. He was all talking about it. He's like, where would I go? I would be on a jet ski in my real life. You know, all that. I was like, oh. and then they killed him, and it blew my fucking mind. I was like, holy crap. They, they killed him. They fucking killed him. And then, and then the timekeepers being robot, that's... That's a thing in the comics, kind of. Um, the one at the end of time, or the, the the one who sees all time in the comics, are they going to bring him in? I don't know. Um, 
I totally thought before the post credit scene that it was now going to be like Sylvie's show because, you know, technically it's Loki, so it was going to be about her now, which I'm kind of like, eh, do I really want to see that? Because she's still kind of a, a non-interesting character to me, just a nothing character. Um, I'm not getting to see more of Morbius kind of, it, seeing him in the dark was super annoying this episode, but then, and then he finally gets aware of everything and like, change of heart and it's so sweet and nice and then they kill him. And then Loki, and then they kill Loki. I knew, I knew, I thought Sylvie was gonna die, honestly. Um, because it's like, you didn't do the double tap. You didn't double tap the office lady. So obviously she's gonna come back and get her. I thought it was gonna be Sylvie though. I was just like, oh, one of them's gonna, it's gonna get Sylvie. And then when Loki died, I was like, oh, oh that was even bigger than the Mo Morbius thing. But then the post credit scene came in and it even showed like a comic accurate Loki. And now we're getting more Lokis? It's like, oh, what the f- How are they gonna explain that? Is that supposed to be like- Is that Marvel's afterlife? Is just all your variants? Like, or does pruning, you know, pruning take them somewhere else? Interesting concept. Anyways, this got me excited. I didn't like last episode. Um, Laminates? Laminates? Whatever it's, whatever it was called. I didn't like last episode, but this one really got me hyped. Really, really got me hyped. Tom Hiddleston been hyping up these two episodes, and it's paying off. The next one better be big. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, Loki episode five uh, just came out, and you know it's kind of uh, Disney Plus shows. They all have this track record of having a like fantastic fourth episode, like mind blowing fourth episode reveals or whatever. Um, those zingers at the end, but then the fifth episode, you know, you're expecting the hype train to keep going, no, um, the penultimate episode and the finale, but then it's just kind of, it's not bad, not at all, it's just kind of, not even about mediocre, you know, um, above, just barely above good, um, this didn't feel like the Falcon Winter Soldier, where the Falcon Winter Soldier's fifth episode just felt like filler before they got into the, ooh, epic finale, this does feel like it's pushing the story forward but at parts it just felt like it was just kind of a stall for time um important stalling for time like the whole president loki bit was just i feel like an excuse just to get them out of there get them moving um there's really not a whole lot to say about this episode it, it, i was i feel like mobius maybe he should have went back to the tva sooner so we could have started watching the downfall i'm really kind of worried they're gonna rush that next episode now you know um who knows? It's I was. Who's gonna be the bad guy at the end? I'm thinking it's Kang. I know the whole. This is like a whole Mephisto situation again, but I don't know. Meph uh, I was for Mephisto, but I wasn't like 100% on board. But I, I think it's Kang. I think Kang's fine at all. If it's another Loki, that's gonna be dumb. I'm um, speaking of Loki. Huh. The romance between Sylvie and Loki. It's like I've gotten more used to it. Like okay. It's fine, but it's still him. He's, it's still, and they're calling it out too. It's literally still him loving himself, which is kind of weird. Kind of, but I don't know. I don't know. It was fun to, it's fun to watch. The new characters are just kind of meh. The, the classic Loki was cool that he did that sacrifice move. I don't know. Uh, it just sucks. I'm going to be out of town with no internet access for the next two weeks. So I have to wait basically like two weeks to watch the finale. So that's why you're not going to be seeing a new um, first, you know, first impression next week. So that sucks for me. That really sucks. God, that really, really sucks. Anyways, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, yeah, that was my first impressions of Loki Episode 5. Loki Episode 6, The Finale. What is it with Marvel shows having only subpar finales? They basically sat in the same room for 45 minutes and kind of gave exposition but not really. This finale more than any other felt more like it was just set up for later stuff. Like Doctor Stranger Season 2. Nice to see we're getting a Season 2 though. I'll talk more about it in my review-ish. Finally done with the Loki review. Y'all can cancel out the video. This is probably, I don't know how long this has been because I'm recording all this. I'm not editing it as I go along like I did last time. 
But the reason why this took me so long is because I was moving. I, like I said, I watched the finale on a car, on a 14 hour car ride from uh, New Mexico. And I was moving right after that. Um, and here we are. Next is Shang-Chi. Uh, what If just finished. Holy crap. I didn't even realize, oh crap, What If's about to finish. Um, so I didn't even get the Loki review out before What If was done. That sucks. So the next reviews are Shang-Chi. Uh, Shang I don't like saying Shang-Chi. It's Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, I think. Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. I'll do a reviewish on that. That one's a movie reviewish, so it's simpler. Um, I just kind of ramble about the movie. Uh, I may see it again. I may go to the theaters and see it again. I don't know. That comes out November 12th on Disney+. Plus. So, now nah, I'm rambling. What if, um, the what if reviewish, I'm also going to do differently from how I do movies and uh, shows. Shows, you know, I go character by character, but you can't really do that with the what if. So, I'm going to be going episode by episode and giving reviews of those and having the uh, first impression episode by episode on the second channel. Speaking of second channel, go to subscribe to the second channel, see my first, uh, um, first thoughts on movies I go see, on episodes that come out. I, these Marvel shows, I watch them the day they come out, most most of the time. Um, so, yeah. And that's where you also get first. And it's also just shit post. I post whatever I want. I think I just posted a mic test. Anyways, I'm recording this on the 11th. So, it's only 6 o'clock. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm recording this on the 12th, I mean, of October. I don't know when it's coming out. It's, uh, but hopefully Shang-Chi and What If Reviewish is coming out before the Eternals movie. That's the goal, so I can post the Eternals review-ish. If I go see it on Thursday, I can post the Eternals review-ish on the day it comes out that Friday, November 5th. So, fingers crossed. Thank you guys for watching. This was highly anticipated by me. I, I already see it being like the Falcon and Winter Soldier review and getting zero views after I worked so hard on it. Um, I'm back to using my old editor. Well, my new old editor. My hair looks bad. Thanks for watching. Video. Over. Do y'all like this mic? I kind of like holding the mic. Video over.